Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's no secret that in 2021 and 2022, we had a lot of these x86 handheld gaming PCs release and hit the market. I've done reviews on a lot of them, and personally, I'm a huge fan of the Ryzen-powered ones from the 4000 series Ryzen up to the 5000 series Ryzen. And of course, recently the Steam Deck was released with a custom APU. We've got Zen 2 cores and RDNA 2 graphics. This is an awesome little setup here. Four cores, eight threads, and they've done an amazing job optimizing this chip for a handheld. And it's really hard to beat the price point that Valve has released this at. But we will be seeing some more powerful x86 handhelds hit the market this year, powered by Ryzen 6000 series APUs. Unfortunately, these devices are a couple months out, but I do have my hands on a 6000 series mini PC. Now in this video, we're actually going to be testing the performance from a 6000 series APU on a handheld, and I'll show you how I get everything set up in just a second. But when it comes down to it, the custom APU in the Steam Deck has been highly customized. I mean, that's why it's called the custom APU. At 15 watts, it's going to be hard to beat even for these new 6000 series APUs on the market, mainly because we have those four extra cores that need to be fed power. Now, this could definitely change if one of these manufacturers figures out a way to kind of disable four of those cores and allow that wattage just to be used for four cores and the built-in RDNA 2 graphics. What I have here is a prototype mini PC I recently did a video on. It's powered by a 6900HS and out of the box it runs at 45 watts, but it can be taken up to around 70 and it does perform really well. But when it comes to that kind of wattage, it's not going to work out for a handheld. Luckily, we can take the TDP down on that 6900H and basically turn it into a 6800U. Recently, I received a new BIOS for this little mini PC, and I've got a lot of parameters that I can adjust from the BIOS. So in this video, we're going to take that TDP down and see how this would perform as a handheld chip, because we've got a lot of these handhelds coming out with the 6600U and the 6800U. And of course, for this video, just testing on an external monitor probably would have worked, but I've come up with a way to use the One X player as kind of an external monitor for this mini PC. That way we kind of get a handheld feel for it. And as you can see, we've got that 6900HS. This is only going to be running at 25 watts, so it should be on par with that 6800U at 25 watts. When it comes to RAM, we've got 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 running at 4800 megahertz, but a lot of these new handhelds coming out will be using 5500, which will definitely help out on the GPU side. And of, of course, things. we've got the new Radeon RDNA 2 iGPU, it's known as the 680M. I've taken it down to 2000 megahertz from the BIOS to put it on par with the 6800U's 680M iGPU, and I'd say that this is going to be a fair fight, given that we only have 4800 megahertz RAM over here, and the new handhelds will be rocking 5500. I know we'll have a higher clock on the CPU because we have the 6900HS, but when running this APU at around 25 watts, we'll never see those higher CPU clocks. So I think this is going to be right on par with the 6800U handhelds that'll be releasing in a few months. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some PC gaming and see how this thing performs. Alright, so here's Project Cars 2. We're at 1280 by 800 because those are the screens we're going to be seeing. We might see some 1080p screens on the market with some of these handhelds, but I'd say 1280 by 800 is going to be the sweet spot. With this one here, I've got a low-medium mix. It's actually doing an amazing job. Uh, Afterburner is up in the top left-hand corner. I've got as much information on screen as I can with hardware info and Afterburner. Still a bit early for these APUs, so some of the sensors aren't working in either of those applications, but I've put up as much as I can. And as you can see, we're running this at 25 watts. The CPU clocks aren't going to go that high here, but we've got that GPU sitting at 2000 megahertz. And by the end of two laps here, I had an average of 75 FPS out of this game. When it comes to The Witcher 3, I've actually had really good luck even on the older Radeon Vega iGPUs. I've never been able to get this kind of performance out of it, but remember, we're working with RDNA 2 here and DDR5. So I've got a couple stutters every once in a while, but on average, I'm getting 81 FPS out of this game. We're at low 1280 by 800 at 25 watts on this APU. And remember, since we're on a mobile APU and a handheld here, turning VSync on is really going to be the way to go. You're going to lock these games at 60, but I always have it unlocked just to show you what it could really do. Turning VSync on will lower the heat on that APU, it'll lower the wattage, and in turn, extend battery life. But uh, with GTA 5 here, we got an average of 82 FPS. Normal settings, 1280 by 800 at 25 watts. Thank you. 
Next up, we've got Injustice 2. Always like to throw at least one fighting game in here. 1280 by 800, low, 25 watts. It's going to run at 60 all day. Really great performance out of this setup. Checking out Elden Ring, and it's so close to being 60. Uh, when there's a lot of stuff on screen, you'll see it drop down, but this is at 25 watts. By the end of this video, I do want to show you what this can do at 35 watts. Now, running your handheld at 35 watts will kill that battery really quickly, but uh, when it comes down to it, some people just want to get the best performance out of these units. So we'll check out 35 watts, but, but I gotta say, by the time the 6000 series handhelds are released, I think we're going to be seeing some really great performance out of this game. Still a bit early on the driver side of things for this 6000 series and the game itself. I definitely wanted to test the new PC port of God of War. Here it is at 1280 by 800. We've got the preset on original and obviously we're still at 25 watts. It's looking pretty decent, but I thought I'd get a little better out of it uh, with everything we've got set up here. Unfortunately, we only got an average of 36 FPS out of this game at 25 watts. Taking that wattage up would definitely help out because it's going to bring the clock up on that CPU and help that GPU keep its maximum clocks. And the final one I wanted to test at 25 watts was Cyberpunk 2077. These new updates really help out with these iGPUs. We're at low settings and I have population density set to medium. I mean, it's getting really close to running this thing at 60, but uh, unfortunately we do get those dips coming on down. Now Fidelity FX is set to balanced with this one. We could still go to performance to get a little better out of it, but running this at 30 on a handheld really isn't that bad. But there is a way to get more out of it with these newer APUs, taking that wattage up. With the wattage at 35, we've got more than enough for the GPU and the CPU. We could go a bit higher, but like I mentioned, you know, even 35 watts is pushing it in a handheld. I suspect performance mode or dock mode with these newer handhelds will be around 35 watts, and we're going to see some really, really great performance out of these games. Same settings, we're at low, 1280 by 800, population density set to medium, and I got an average of 77 FPS out of this. And when it comes to Elden Ring at 35 watts, it's right there at the edge. Still get a few dips here and there, but optimizations for the game itself and drivers are coming down the road. So we're probably going to be able to run this game at a constant 60, 35 watts on the 6800U with the new RDNA 2 680M iGPUs. And keep in mind, the RAM in this is running at 4800 megahertz. We're going to see faster RAM, which will help out with this iGPU. So those dips we're getting here might be totally eliminated with 5500 megahertz RAM. So in the end, the Ryzen 6000 series handhelds are coming. And as soon as I get my hands on a real one, we'll be doing some testing. But I think that's the kind of performance we're going to be seeing out of these 6800U powered handhelds at 25 watts. There's a lot of optimizations that these manufacturers can do, but when it comes to the Steam Deck, it's really coming down to a combination of the hardware and software. Valve is a big enough company, they were able to get a custom APU built specifically for the Steam Deck, and they've got some really great software going on. What we really need to see out of these new 6000 series handhelds is software optimizations to kind of disable cores to allow lower wattage and higher clocks on the cores we have active. That way, we can get enough wattage to those cores and the GPU at the same time and not running it at 30 to 40 watts in a handheld. Because when it comes down to it, the Steam Deck is only running at 15 watts and we're seeing some amazing performance at that lower wattage. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. As soon as I get my hands on one of these 6000 series powered units, I will be making some videos. But until then, I wanted to test this out and I think we're going to get really close at that 25 watt threshold. If you're interested, let us know in the comments below what kind of features you want to see in the next handhelds. I know the 6000 series APU is definitely going to be one of them. You know, one thing that I would love to see is just a better overall screen. Something with like an OLED or even an AMOLED display. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the Super AMOLED displays and I think it would be great in a 7 inch or an 8 inch handheld like this. But if you can think of any new features you want to see added to a handheld, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.